Hello and welcome to our December uh, edition of the Select Board Roundtable. I'm Beth Cassavant and I'm joined with my fellow board members, Mo DiPaolo, Teresa Flynn, and Michelle Conlin. And today we're doing a show about the safety net in town. Um, it's the resources that exist to help residents who need assistance with everyday expenses like fuel, utilities, taxes, and food. And there's so many resources and supports, but it can be very challenging to know where to start to look when you find that you're in need of some assistance. And the town is usually the last place that people decide to turn to um, when they're struggling, but actually we have so many resources for people. And with winter upon us and inflation driving up the cost of necessities, we saw this as an opportunity to use this time to share some of the programs with the people at home that make up the safety net. Um, our recently completed strategic plan um, has an outcome area of thriving and the strategy of expanding social services through increased supports and equ equitable access to those supports is something that we are committed to as a board um, as a way to benefit all the residents in our community and make sure that everyone's able to thrive. And so we have a lot to fit into this time to talk about the different ways that we can help people out um, if they're in need. And I'm going to start by just talking a little bit about fuel assistance and I know that my oil tank was just filled the other day and I did not want to look at the bottom line because mm -hmm. it's I know gas prices are coming down a bit but that was still a pretty big bill especially at this time of year when there seem to be a lot of expenses um, so we do have some fuel assistance programs in town that can be used for gas propane and electric um, some of them are local and then some of them offer some assistance where people would qualify federally. So we are serviced through um, what we call SMOC, which is the Southern Middlesex Opportunity Council, and it serves Shrewsbury residents who own or rent their homes. And I think sometimes people think that these programs are only for homeowners when really renters are also eligible to, to participate in these programs. Um, there's a lot of information that we're going to be presenting, but I think the takeaway, and I know that we'll talk about it again at the end of the program, is if you're 59 years of age or younger, your point of contact to receive any kind of benefits, especially the SMOC benefits, would be Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services. Um, and their phone number is 508-845-6932. And if you're older than 60, you would want to start with the Council on Aging, uh, and that's 508-841-8640. Um, and if you weren't to qualify for those SMOC, uh, for SMOC assistance, there's also the Salvation Army Good Neighbor Energy Fund that can be an option for people as well and can be contacted at 508-756-7191. And I know that these numbers are going to go um, on the screen also so that people can write them down um, as well. And then one of the things that I know, Mo, that you've worked on over the years is the home heating group in town and there is a resource booklet that's available for residents. Um, I just have the, the printed version that you can access online but it has all of the information that we're talking about and more in it um, that people can pick this up at Town Hall, at the library, at the Council on Aging and have a copy as well. Um, but it's the emergency oil mm -hmm. assistance relief and I know that you were uh, a champion of getting some of the um, American Rescue Plan Act funding to be used for that purpose. And I didn't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about that money and how we're using it to help people with oil assistance. Yeah, that, um, that program has been in existence for a bunch of years. Um, and it's been funded through fundraisers and, and um, things like that. Um, but when we had the opera funds um, available, we were able to um, get, I forgot the exact amount just for the heating oil. Um, so how did, how did we do that? We did it through the utility, right? Um, mm -hmm. Utility assistance. Yeah, we had, I think we, it was $150,000 we were able to take from, from the opera funds um, to use for uh, utility assistance. Um, and that'll be spread out over um, the next couple of years to augment um, 
the program that we have in place now. And I think, um, if I remember correctly, that the amount of oil that you can get increased. Right. Um, because it was only 75, 75 gallons. 75. That's an emergency situation. I think it went up uh, over 100 to gallons. To 100 gallons, um, right. Because when it's really cold out, 100 gallons or 75 gallons doesn't go that far. Um, but we were able to, that was one of the things with the APRA funds, we were able to, um, to get some more money for us. So it, it'll, it'll help. It'll go a lot farther this winter. I had sat in on the home heating group meeting and um, Al's Oil is the community partner. So if someone has an oil emergency, whether it's maintenance or an empty tank, it's Al's Oil that goes out. And mm -hmm. he was saying that, and this meeting I think was in October, he was saying he'd already received one call and that the, the account that houses the money is the Shrewsbury Oil Assistance Relief, which is known as SOAR. Mm -hmm. It's managed through Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services and as you said, funded by donations. But he said that they would only be able to help about 15 residents this year based on the amount of money that was left and the price of oil right now. So this money is really critical in being able to help more people when they find themselves in an emergency situation. SOAR isn't for long term. For long term, you need to go and, and get yourself some SMOC benefits and see if you qualify. But if you find yourself in an emergency, and the, the council on aging can help with those applications too. <coughs> so the other um, opportunity is for our electric customers, and that's through Selco, and that's the Share the Warmth program. Uh, people who receive their electric bill will notice that there's always an opportunity to donate to Share the Warmth. I know that Selco is also was selling hats and scarves and ornaments yeah. at the Town Center Association's Yuletide Market to uh, raise some money for that program, and it's to help people pay their electric bills in the winter months. Um, again, you have to be referred to this program. You can be referred through St. Anne's Human Services, Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services, the Council on Aging, or your local church. And those credits go right on to people's electric bills. Mm -hmm. And then for Eversource customers, um, you should not have your gas disconnected in the winter months. I actually believe it's against the law to do that. Um, but if you do need assistance, Eversource also has programs available and you can contact Eversource directly at 800-592-2000 in order to see what they can do to either spread your payments out so that you don't have a huge payment during the winter, it's more spread throughout the year uh, to make it a little bit more consistent for people or to see if maybe you qualify for some government assistance. Yeah, I believe it's November 1st to April 1st, they can't turn your They can't turn your off. Mm -hmm. But the difference is with oil, right? If you run out of oil, you run out of oil. Yeah. There's, right. That's why it's so important to have that emergency program. One of the other pieces um, with ARPA funding is we allocated some funding to help um, improve energy efficiency um, within people's homes for those who qualify for some of these assistance programs. Um, you know, uh, Eversource customers are eligible for the Mass Save program, which is an incredible program um, statewide. There are no, there's no catch to it. It really is. Um, you just get, you know, subsidi subsidized energy efficiency upgrades in your home um, for a very, very, very low cost. And um, for those who are not Eversource customers in the community, um, there is uh, Selco has an energy efficiency, an energy audit program, um, and they'll do some efficiency work. And then we allocated some funding here um, for folks who need that heating assistance um, to to be able to qualify you know who don't qualify for mass save to be able to get some of those um, upgrades subsidized so I'm excited about that I think it's you know it's great you don't want to heat heat a home when you're losing it losing your heat to the outside so mm -hmm. it's a uh, and, and something as up. basic as just insulation in your yeah. ceiling can make a huge difference yes. and, and with the split it's not a lot of money, so the, the money that we have will, will go a long way because you only pay about 25% of the cost. Yeah. Um, so, it, and it makes a big difference. I did it in my house, it made a huge difference. Yeah, it's it's a tremendous difference. We I live in a house that was built in 1959, and I think the insulation standards called for like <laughs> an inch or two of insulation uh, back then. And, um, you know, we updated it, and it, it's made an incredible difference just within the home, just feeling warmer, even when the thermostat is set to the same temperature. So um, it does make a difference. So I'm excited about that. People can access that through Selco. Um, I don't, I'm actually not sure. It, I think it is gonna, going to be um, managed through Selco. Um, but I'm, I'm but not if you sure. Get, if, if you get it, if you have natural gas in your house, you definitely go through MassSave. Yes, no absolutely. MassSave is a phenomenal program. Mm -hmm. So everyone who is a, a natural gas customer in town, I highly recommend it. <laughs> so 
Yeah, and I think Selco is um, facilitating the, um, the portion on the town's end, so. So the next piece of it is food <coughs> assistance. And I know, Teresa, that you spent some time understanding some of the resources that are available to people uh, through the Council on Aging. Yes, we did. And um, I just want to say also, Beth, this, it was your idea to do uh, this topic for this roundtable, and I'm, I'm grateful that you did because um, I learned a lot that I wasn't aware of. And I do hope that people who are watching, you know, while they might not directly need assistance, it's great for them to be aware so that they can help others who, sure. who might. So um, several great resources available through um, not just the Council on, on Aging here in Shrewsbury, but to um, start with them, they have a food pantry. So I know you're going to talk about the community fridge. The community fridge is located right next to the senior center, um, but the senior center also has a, a food pantry that people can donate to as well. But for those that, that need to, to utilize it, um, they have everything from rice, pasta, sauces, canned vegetables, et cetera. They also have some, some frozen meal options. And they also partner with Heart to Home Meals in Marlboro, which also will give um, home delivery options for people. And I know that the staff at the, the Senior Center also will deliver um, food pantry items to people in need. So um, they can be contacted directly for that. Um, they also have congregate dining Monday through Friday, 1130 to 1230, excluding holidays. So they do ask that you place your order no later than 10 o'clock to business days prior. They do ask for a donation of $2.50 per meal. Um, I believe that there's um, relief available if someone is not able to, to pay that. And I know that in December and January, it is free for Shrewsbury seniors. Um, and then there is Meals on Wheels. So that's through Elder Services of Worcester and they deliver lunchtime meals they define it to frail, homebound individuals who are at least 60 years of age. Again, elders are asked to make a $2.50 donation if, if they're able. Um, they do have modified meal options for diabetics, et cetera. And again, the, the Senior Center Council on Aging is a great resource to help people to navigate which of these uh, food assistance programs they want to access. That's great. I know you had touched upon the community fridge, which is uh, was a Rotary Club sponsored project, but now belongs to the community. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a model in place there where you give what you can and you take what you need. It's open 24 seven and it's located right outside of the <coughs> senior center sort of to the left and tucked away um, towards the back. And they, they do receive weekly donations from Panera and also from Wegmans. I think it's Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So if you're listening to this and you're looking for some baked goods and pastry items. That's typically what's there on Tuesdays <laughs> and Wednesdays, but there's a pantry and the fridge and the, and the refrigerator and the freezer. So there's some fresh food options as well. And we're always encouraging community groups and uh, local businesses and individuals to donate to the fridge. And um, it, it's, the food is gone as pretty much as soon as it hits the shelves. Yeah. So there's definitely yeah. need and it's definitely used. Um, and it's cared for by the community. It's run through a Facebook group, Shrewsbury Community Fridge and it's cared for by the community. People donate to it, people clean it, people take responsibility for it, and it's really been a, a wonderful thing to see um, the community embrace. Yeah, um, it just as a <coughs> an aside to um, <coughs> what the, Teresa was saying, when the Council on Aging started way before there was a building, um, what the main thing that they did was provide meals, and th they started delivering meals, and they started having um, the congregate meals, and uh, I think they were doing it through the uh, um, the housing authority, mm -hmm. one of the buildings. And it was amazing how many meals they did a year back. That was like in the early or the, or the late '70s. Um, it was amazing. So it's been going on for a long time, and that was the main thrust of of what the council on aging did. So the needs existed for uh, for a long time, um, and apparently it hasn't diminished. It hasn't, and I should have um, noted, Mo, um, that the the menu is available on their website and in their monthly newsletters. And I do think that they do so much there that's not directly related to the type of of safety net or assistance that we're talking about. But when you really talk about the importance of 
uh, socialization. Mm -hmm. I think that it's just a wonderful thing that, you know, not only do they offer these meal services, but it gives you the opportunity to be there and to socialize with mm -hmm. others. So I mean, even the Meals on Wheels, when you think about mm -hmm. that, that's like a wellness check built into yeah. a meal delivery. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, it's someone, sometimes that Meals on Wheels delivery person may be the only person that a senior who's in a homebound senior sees in a day or several days. That's a great point because um, part of what Meals on Wheels does is they do make those emergency calls. So mm -hmm. you're absolutely right about a wellness check. Yeah. So the other uh, food assistance that we definitely want to mention is the St. Anne's Food Pantry and that's located in the basement of St. Anne's Church, 130 Boston Turnpike. Many people might um, associate that with the thrift shop, which unfortunately uh, didn't survive COVID and needed to close. but there's really a silver lining, and I don't know if you've had a chance to visit the food pantry recently, but they turned that space that was the thrift store into like a grocery store. And so now in addition to the distribution that is done on Mondays for their clients, people can actually shop for their food. And that way there's greater choice and flexibility in what you're bringing home and also probably less waste because mm -hmm. people are getting exactly what they want. And so to be able to um, access that you can contact St. Anne's directly uh, and be able to um, get food assistance through them. And I think also um, important to note that all of these um, resources that we're talking about, they do exercise a lot of discretion. It is confidential mm -hmm. um, and they Good are very point. you know, sensitive to that. And um, you know, I know my daughter volunteered at, at St. Anne's recently and uh, so just Related to all of this, again, if, if someone's watching, there's so many opportunities if you want to not only make mm -hmm. contributions, but to you know, dedicate some of your time. For to sure, and they're, they're a volunteer operation um, at St. Anne's in their, their food pantry, so they really depend on, on those volunteers to come in, especially on a Monday, to help out with that distribution. It's just an intense work. Mm -hmm. That's great. So the other piece that we wanted to talk about was uh, tax assistance, which I'm sure is always <coughs> on people's minds. Mm -hmm. uh, I know tax bills have, we are all aware that tax bills have increased um, with the 2021 override and the police station and, and just the valuation of homes increasing. Um, it's certainly a burden that we recognize people face. Um, and so, Mo, I know you were instrumental in working with the assessor um, to go through the tax exemptions that are available and making sure that we are taking advantage of them to the full extent and I hope yeah, we can we, talk a little bit about that. This year we were um, very fortunate when um, our new assessor came in and was, it was, uh, was familiar with these programs and knew how to um, be able to make changes. Um, one thing um, that we were able to do is to create a tax relief fund um, similar to the share the warmth where um, people could voluntarily um, uh, put an extra amount on their, uh, on their bill and uh, make a voluntary contribution to help people who are having trouble paying their taxes um, and um, <clears throat> put whatever amount of money you want to put in that goes into a pool and there's a, a, a little committee that allocates the money and if, if, if in a year a thousand dollars gets um, gets contributed and 10 people um, apply, then it gets split up 10 ways, so $100. Whatever comes in for the year, it gets split up by the number of people who, um, who apply. So it doesn't, they don't build up a pool, they use it every year. Um, and that, it, all of these things go through the assessor's office, so if people have any questions about that, they can go to the assessor's office. One of the big things we were able to do um, which interestingly enough, um, when we looked into it in the beginning, we were told couldn't be done. Um, and when Ruth Anderson came in, she said, yes, it can be done. Um, we were able to take the $1,000 um, credit um, that seniors uh, over 65, I think, um, if, if you income qualified, you could get $1,000 off your tax bill. Um, and there's a formula in there, so it really was up to $1,000, but um, you get $1,000 off your tax bill. Um, it didn't make any difference what your tax bill was, you'd get $1,000 right off it. Um, and you have to go in and provide some information, it's all confidential, 
it's so confidential, the information, the income information of the individual cannot leave the assessor's office. It, it literally cannot leave the assessor's office. It's private information. Uh, and for a couple of years, we looked into trying to see if we could increase it. And um, I know when I looked into it, I was told we couldn't. And Ruth said, you could. And sure enough, you could. And we were able to increase that amount to up to $2,000. Um, so there are people who probably could um, qualify for the $2,000. The way it works, it depends on what the value of your house is and what your taxes were the previous year. But eventually, with tax increases, you would get up to the $2,000. Um, it, it's the same process. You just qualify at a, um, depending on what your tax bill is, you could get up to $2,000 off. Um, so people go up to the assessor's office. Um, they could get the, the, um, the applications, fill it out, go in. If they qualify, they, they would get the amount. Whatever the amount is, up to $2,000, they would get it off their bill. Um, they just have to do that every year. It's a simple form to fill out. Um, so that's a big help for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and also the income limits um, <coughs> changed um, because it's, it's, it's income based. Those only could go up a certain amount a year, but the income limits increased. So people who might not have uh, were eligible last year might be eligible this year because of their income. So um, I thought that was exciting. So that's a lot of money. It is, um, yeah. It's, you know, that, um, that's a lot of money for anybody. Yeah. It was such a narrow <coughs> pool of people who were income eligible. Um, and so the changes made this past May um, will will qualify a lot a lot more people in the community that need this support. So um, I'm you know I think that's wonderful that those changes were made at town meeting. Yeah, that was a, it, un unfortunately a lot of people um, who would qualify don't want people to know it, it because pride or privacy they don't want people to know and they don't take advantage of it. But it is confidential it's state law yeah. um, it's not public it's not like all the other stuff of public records it's it's private um, they can't they can't let anybody else know so it's worth looking into and then some of the other um, um, exemptions and uh, uh, that are available for, for seniors if, if you're um, if you're legally blind if you've got other um, handicaps and other um, the various exemptions, some of those were, were raised, the income limits were raised, the asset limits were raised, mm -hmm. uh, and then the amount of the exemption was raised. So we, we did a lot this year, um, thanks to Ruth's work. Um, so hopefully seniors this year will take advantage of it, people who are disabled will take advantage of it, yeah. um, and they can get some help. Yeah. There's also a program um, run through the Senior Center where uh, you can um, a qualifying senior can do uh, like odd jobs, some administrative office type of things um, for the, for program. the town, and you get a tax write-off. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I I understand that there's a limited amount of um, that you know there's a limited there's a cap on how much they can offer to the community. Um, so it's something if you're interested in. Um, I know when I was growing up, my grandmother actually did that um, in her town, mm -hmm. um, and elsewhere in Massachusetts, and she loved it because she wasn't ready to just be fully retired. And it was great. She got some money off her tax bill and got to do some work and meet some people. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a great program. Um, I would, you know, I think you contact uh, the senior center mm -hmm. um, to to find out about that. And um, I think because it is limited, the amount that they're allowed to to do, um, maybe maybe contact them earlier in the year mm -hmm. if you're interested. So yeah, yeah, people have worked in the clerk's office. They worked um, in the building department. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good program because they get to get out, they get to work, and they get to write off. Um, are they going to break on their taxes so yeah. it works out mm -hmm. there? Yeah. You had mentioned um, the, the tax relief where people can donate, and you said how there was a committee, and that committee has three resident members of it, and we're currently advertising because they're appointed by right. our board. Mm -hmm. And I did check in to see how that was going because I know it's an open um, vacancy right now. We have no applicants. So if you're watching this at home and you think you might be interested in serving on this committee, um, 
it is the chair of the board of assessors, the town treasurer, and three residents that are going to evaluate the applications to provide this tax relief from the fund. And did you mention that we're using $100,000 of ARPA money towards that fund? Uh, no, I didn't mention it, but I'm glad you did. Right. <laughs> so to sort of seed money um, to get them going to make sure there's something in that fund to be able to provide the tax relief, but we can't if we don't have people on the committee, so hopefully they'll send a letter of interest to our, uh, the select board at shrewsburyma.gov. Right. Definitely one of those later looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a fun yes. one. Yeah. 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 yeah, giving money away is always nice. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's a feel good. Um, so we have about three minutes left. Do, do you sure. want to wrap us up? Sure, so um, in general, if you or someone you know is in need of support with fuel assistance, tax relief, food insecurity, or mental health services, Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services and the Council on Aging are able to connect residents with the available resources in Shrewsbury and the region. So for people over, uh, people age 60 and over, you can start by reaching out to the Council on Aging at 508-841-8640. Uh, for families and people under the age of 60, you can contact Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services at 508 845-6932. Um, so these organizations are the social safety net um, for the community and can get you connected with the uh, services and resources you might need. Um, for more information, look for the town's home heating resource booklet, which is available in the town on the town's website and in hard copy at the town hall, library, and senior center. And residents can also contact any one of us, um, including John, who was not <laughs> able to join us tonight. Um, the town manager's office, or for families with school-aged children, you can reach out to your school nurse for assistance in navigating the many resources that are designed to improve people's quality of life. Um, and for those of you who are watching who are not in need of these supports but may want to give back to your community, um, you can donate to Share the Warmth through Selco. Um, and there are also, Beth mentioned earlier in the show, that you were selling some really cute um, Shrewsbury ornaments and the nice like Shrewsbury hats you see around town and the scarves um, to help raise money for that program. And um, you can donate to Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services, which is a private nonprofit agency that partners with um, the town. Um, you can donate directly to them and um, include a note that you want the funding, uh, your donation to go to the SOAR program. Um, and you can also donate to Friends of the Shrewsbury Senior Center um, who uh, help run some of these programs through the Council on Aging. Yeah. So, Any other last thoughts? All right. Okay. Stay warm. That was out a there. lot. It's going to be a cold weekend. <laughs> it is. Mm -hmm. so. Well, thanks for watching and um, thanks for being here and, and sharing some of this information with our residents. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you.